Profscast with Professor Fensterle and guests. Yeah, welcome to the Profscast. My name is Joe Fensterle. I am professor of biotechnology and bioengineering at the Rhein-Wald University in Kleve. And today my guest is uh, Professor Florian Wichon. Florian, hello and a warm welcome. Yeah, thank you. And uh, nice to um, share this idea with you, having a Profscast, which uh, sounds like a good name and a good idea most likely <laughs> okay uh, honestly I, I, my guess it's not really correct because indeed i'm your guest because this is this is the lab of florian vision florian is also a professor here at the university of rheinwald and i'm a guest in his lab so um which is a rare occasion <laughs> in your lab at least yeah. <laughs> so um a, a very short version of your job description is i would say digging in the dirt is that yes. correct that's absolutely correct as a soil scientist and uh, a person doing research in agriculture we indeed uh, need to have a look at the basic of every life on earth um, on the terrestrial system which is soil Okay, so and, and this is also what you teach your students: what's what's in the soil, or what's what's uh, what's uh, let's say the, the teaching here at the at the. Yeah, I teach in sustainable university. agriculture mainly, and in biological resources on a master's level. And the focus is on soil science and plant nutrition, as my job description is. So we look at uh, basically the basics of soil science, so the physical and the chemical properties, but especially also the biological properties. That's where our research is focusing on. Um, plus the relation of soil to plants, which we eventually want to use in agriculture as human food or animal feed uh, and for other services. And so we better need to better understand how these um, two compartments interact. And that's what we focus on also in the teaching in the different classes on bachelor's and master's level, um, undergraduate, but also graduate level. Okay. By the way, I just realized, and lo looking at your lab coat, that um, for the soil scientists, of course, it's a bit a different color than for the yeah, biotechnologists. This, this is actually so. This is um, actually a clean lab coat uh, for a soil uh, scientist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. To be honest, the cleanest I mean, you have found. This, this, this looks like a new lab this coat. Is to bio yeah, so yeah, this, so this is bioengineering. So this is a very so. simple. This for the viewers, yeah. at least on Spotify, you cannot see it, but for the viewers, uh, you see this is biotechnology. This is soil science. Yeah. You choose at the end. And yeah, as I said, is, um, it's quite. It's quite clean because I do not spend that much time in the lab. I have, of course, my staff members and um, the students are working in the lab. Um, yeah, but still it looks as if I use it frequently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, now you, You're now at the University of Rheinwald, as we know now, but uh, you didn't start here. So could you give me a short summary of your uh, scientific career? Yeah, my scientific career started at Kassel University when I started studying organic farming, basically, with a focus on tropical and subtropical agriculture after uh, spending a year in South Africa. I did some, basically, um, development aid in the broadest sense. Um, and that's where I got into soil science from the first semester on, especially into soil biology. Um, yeah, in different fields, and uh, I did my uh, diploma and my master's there, and then spent another year abroad in Australia, coming back to Kassel University to then eventually do my PhD in uh, the field of soil biology and plant nutrition, looking at the interaction between plant roots and soil microbes in the soil. Um, and from there, um, I moved on to not doing a postdoc, but spending time in industry. I worked for a fertilizer company for two and a half years in marketing different specialty fertilizers, which, of course, influence plant growth, but also soil properties. Um, and from there, I actually moved on to Kleve. So 10 years ago, um, actually 11 years ago already, um, I started this professorship here at the brand new University of Applied Sciences, Rheinwal in Kleve at that time. And in, indeed, you were also the first dean here at our faculty and built everything up. So yes, physically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job, Florian. You did a good Thanks job. For I, have that, to, yeah. I have to tell you. I chose uh, some uh, quite good people for the different jobs at some I stage. I think that you were not in my commission. So uh, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, a career, of course, when, when, you were, when you were really a kid, did you already 
think of becoming a soil scientist and digging in the dirt forever. So this is what childs usually do already. They dig in the dirt and then to conserve that. Or uh, did you plan another career as a, as a kid? Well, I was brought up in the rural areas in a village with more cows and pigs than human beings. And indeed, um, tenfold more earthworms than cows, pigs and human beings together. Um, and of course, I was digging in the dirt, um, not every day, but most of the time. Um, not intending to become a scientist, not intending to become a teacher, um, but rather being interested in agriculture and environmentalism, um, realizing that there is an interaction between agriculture and environmental health in a negative and positive way. Um, and from the childhood on, we had animals at home, even though not being farmers in, in the true sense. Um, so there was always an interest in doing this. At the same time, um, I was pretty much involved in uh, the work of my family, who was in building and construction. So at some stage, I wanted to become an architect um, to create beautiful houses, um, to just then realize that um, um, I'm probably not an artist. Um, but rather a person who wants to build and develop things and try to better understand how things work. But on the track of science, I just basically came along the way of studying agriculture after at some stage deciding to get back to agriculture after spending time in construction, after spending time in development work. Yeah, and at the end now, it's at least in the in the in the um, time now in between the lecture period, you constructed the natural pool, so there is still construction going on. So this is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. also <laughs> renovated my own house, so I have two right hands, I would say, um, and that's maybe what also differs between a soil scientist and a bioengineer. A, so a bioengineer stage. has two left hands. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do the, the <laughs> stuff with the fine pipettes and everything, and that's why I think the cooperation is a very good thing of having experts from different fields um, with different perspectives, people with two right hands who are not very precise sometimes as soil scientists. Well, um, we hardly use these fine pipettes, but um, then joining up with, with a bioengineer, I think that's a very good idea um, to maybe also use projects um, to do that along with students. Yeah, okay. And, and there, are, there were also in the, already in the past projects where bioengineering students were... Uh, yeah, we do that frequently. Some, uh, we offer projects um, for all students of the faculty or of the university. Um, and indeed, we had projects with students from, from bioengineering. Um, and at least one ended up in a publication as well. Uh, I think okay. actually two. Yeah. yeah, that's not too bad. Not too no. bad. But um, now coming maybe to your, your research area. So honestly, you know, you have your plants and this bacteria interacting. Is that really cool? And the soil is mainly fungi because they dominate the soil mm. microbial biomass in terms of quantity, in terms of activity, and especially in terms of their necromass, so the remainings, mm -hmm. which is extremely important because that contributes to organic matter in the soil, which is the critical fertility parameter in soil. Um, and indeed, we, in agriculture, need the soil to produce crops, to let plants grow properly and then to feed human beings and, and animals. So it's... We are interested in this interaction, not only looking at one compartment, but understanding what the role of soil is for the plant, but also what the plant contributes to maintaining fertility of the soil. And the microbes play a very crucial role, as I said, in particular the fungi, which are much more difficult to assess and measure um, as compared to bacteria, um, which is the second most important uh, component in terms of mass, in terms of um, functions. Um, along with some larger organisms such as earthworms, which are beautiful and you can easily see them, and they have specific functions which are also quite important, contributing to plant growth. So you can see we work at this interface all the time trying to better understand how we can improve soil to improve plant growth again and how that feed, feeds back onto the whole system. Yeah, that, that you see also that's the difference from a soil scientist to the rest of the world. Earthworms are beautiful. I don't want to say that they are ugly, but my my at least my what is beautiful. I did not have yet earthworms in this collection, but I should have a look again. Yeah, Maybe there are also is, ugly uh, animals in the soil. <laughs> okay, but I don't, I don't, don't want to be rude here. I don't mention. Uh, 
So I, of any. course, for me, it's a pity now, as I have no idea of fungi. I'm a microbiologist, but always bacteria and sometimes viruses and fungi are way Archea. too complicated for me. So therefore, um, now it's, of course, a bit um, shocking for me that uh, for you, the fungi are more important in terms of biomass, but I think not in terms of uh, cell counts. Cell counts, bacteria dominate. Thank you. Um, but when it comes to functions, it's mm. for many of the major functions, it's especially the fungi. Yeah. And we more and more understand that one, when we want to um, maintain important soil functions such as sequestering carbon in the soil to counteract carbon dioxide emissions, um, we need fungi more than we need bacteria. Um, and most of our activities in agriculture um, are rather harmful to a lot of the, uh, the fungi in the soil. The bacteria do not bother that much. They are a bit more dump, I would say, than fungi. I know that now it's kind of a rhetorical question because I see that you have fun in your area. But would you go again there in this area? If you could restart now, would you go again becoming a soil scientist or would you say? Yeah, I would probably in parallel uh, to a f an agricultural uh, study program also choose a biology or chemistry um, program if I w would have known that I would end up as a, let's say, analytical soil scientist, plant nutritionist, because in agriculture, you not only focus on the natural science, but on the social science, on the economics, on the technologies you use. So learning about how to drive and how a tractor works. Um, so there's not the same um, depth of knowledge which you generate on, um, on chemistry, on, on biology, on methods, analytics in, sp in particular. Um, so Looking back, that is something I had to learn on the fly during the PhD um, and thereafter. Um, and that's why, as let's say, soil scientists with an agricultural background, we love to hook up with people who have, let's say, the classical knowledge in bioengineering or in biology, where they learned a lot about, let's say, the analytical procedures, the chemistry behind it, the physics behind it. Um, we can connect it to the real world in agriculture then, which often is a problem for some people having, let's say, a more disciplinary approach. Yeah, but looking back, uh, probably would have taken on the challenge to also do biology along with uh, farming. Yeah, but the drawback in my case is, for example, I have maybe more um, in my study courses with chemistry and uh, biology, but I cannot drive a tractor. So if I want to construct a natural pool at home, no way. That's, <laughs> that's see? just digging with a space. Remember, <laughs> it's a university of applied sciences. Yeah, Florian, um, I would say... That's it. I know now everything about soil science. Uh, I doubt that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, but I know someone who knows everything about so soil science. I don't That's know everything thing. about soil science, but um, I have a lot. Yeah? A fair so, bit of knowledge, but of course there are other yeah. experts out there who know much better about the different fields. But we have, I think, quite a good group here, um, knowledgeable group of soil scientists in my work group and um, beyond. Yeah, so I would say the group is very perfect. Not the best lab coats, as, as I've seen, they're also broken here. So maybe um, you could ask your president whether you can get uh, a new one. But nevertheless, thank you very much. It was a pleasure, Florian. Yeah, always a pleasure. I enjoyed it and um, looking forward to the outcome of this profs cast. <laughs> okay. And I will definitely follow it and like it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thumbs up. So that's the word for, for the viewers. So again, uh, also for the viewers, thank you a lot. Um, the... Long version, as always, will be on Spotify and uh, iTunes or whatsoever. So as the, the complete version, the shortened version is on YouTube. Uh, I hope that I see or hear you again uh, for the next Profscast. And uh, I wish you all a nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>